Number one topic, some sad news for all of you guys involved, especially for the people that are familiar with my channel, people that maybe discovered my channel through the video that I made about this place in the beginning or when it first opened. Um, unfortunately, news came or news broke that Fold uh, Builders London's first 24-hour nightclub in Canning Town has unfortunately been temporarily closed or temporarily the license has been temporarily suspended. Um, we don't have much information as to what actually is going on, but uh, Fold were nice enough to put out a Facebook post yesterday morning and kind of broke down exactly what the issue was. Um, I'm going to talk about, I'm basically going to read what Fold said. I'm going to give my interpretation and then we're going to get some extra information that I've kind of now discovered from a new recorder that might... Um, uh, shed a bit more light as to what happened and also it might be a bit of a cautionary tale for some of the other clubs coming um you know that will eventually launch off the back of this because as distressing as this news is the natural the natural kind of events or the natural kind of a uh, process of things is that usually you know when an influential club like fold does eventually shut down because of all the goodwill because of all the good memories people have kind of um um I remember from that place they usually go on in to make their own little spaces too it always kind of spurs on a uh, loads of people to kind of go on and do their own thing as well so don't be too sad about it because i'm sure people someone else kind of fill the spaces and also there might be a possibility that fold might reopen so let's not um get too down about the whole issue to begin with but this is a statement from fold <clears throat> posted on their facebook i'm sure other people have also posted it on theirs but essentially the message says the following this is from four posted yesterday at 9 a.m uh we regretfully um announced that our license to operate has been suspended by new m council this news has hit us by surprise and extremely hard last night serious accusations were brought to us and the local licensing committee as a result of such our license has been suspended and an immediate shutdown of the club without fair trial has been imposed we extremely we feel extremely blessed to have built a community around fold that can't be compared or replicated every single one of you have made fold more than just four walls and sound system we have all created a new way of thinking a way of uniting and more importantly given refreshing meaning to the word safe space this is all thanks to you our community we are all currently appealing the suspension with the aim of uh, to maintain our operation for this weekend and events moving forward we offer our most sincere apologies to anyone affected by this decision we can assure you that we are working hard as we can to get to the bottom of this no matter what you are the reason we are fighting and you are our daily motivation stay put we are not giving up more information coming soon so i'm sure most of my um e friends out there most of the people in the scene are very aware with this situation this is a common thing that happens in london it's super frustrating just as we get just as we are finally just as we find a spot you know just as it kind of decides to get just as it kind of gets more popular and people find it it starts to find its groove it's kind of found its way in terms of programming people are more aware of it um djs are uh, I'm, I'm sure people in the industry are really speaking very highly of fold so much so that other artists are flying down to come and play usually maybe even for a discounted rates they're more open to come and, and do it um you had richie horton playing there for fuck's sake the other week right so just as it's kind of really bubbling is just when the local council comes up and pulls the plug it always happens. It's a it's a kind of an age old story, especially if you're familiar with anything that's happened in Hackney Council with the clubs in Dawson and some of the other warehouse events that happened um, during the early parts of the year two thousands. You know that this is a common thing that happens. And unfortunately, I think for me personally, I would say the likelihood that Fold is going to reopen in the in in the way that it did reopen and and kind of get back to operating the way it did previously is very much it's it's probably slim close to none. Usually when um, the local councils pull the plug on clubs like this, it's, it's an intimidation tactic. It's a tactic to kind of store you, to essentially bleed you dry. Uh, it's a kind of a death by a thousand cuts because essentially if you suspend the club now, this, this basically throw the put out statement. Everyone's shared it. We're all aware it's going to be closed. The people who <coughs> who aren't aware that they're appealing it won't come on the weekend. The club will be empty. You'll have to close um, two hours uh, ahead of time that you does before. So if it's closing at six now, it'll probably have to close at four, which means they'll have to open earlier, which means they won't have many people in there because everyone arrives there at 12 or 1 a.m. in the morning for the most part. It's essentially going to bleed them dry to a point where they can't pay their security guards, they can't pay their bartenders, they can't pay the managers, they can't pay the, the sound guy, the lighting guy. Like it's going to affect everything around the club and eventually the club will end up coming to close down. Now, I don't want that to happen. Right? I'm a big fan of Fold. If you guys know anything about my channel, you know that. Uh, or about my podcast in general you know i've reviewed loads of events i went to at fold i was there at the first birth i was there at the first party at fold uh, fold's first party when it first launched it was one of the most memorable clubbing experience i've had in my life it really did remind me of the heyday of some of the kind of heady days of my early times in berlin right everyone kind of in the same space at the same time at the same 
point in life so all that sharing this same experience together it was electric i couldn't get over it i was thinking about it for weeks on end after the fact but i also know how shitty and how uncooperative some of these local councils are and how panicky they are as all these situations because you know there are maybe that there's never been a point where i've seen a local council compromise of a nightclub and kind of offer some kind of reconciliation and kind of work to kind of sort these things out on their own it's usually just one authoritarian figure such as the council or such as some local um, residents saying they don't want this thing raising um opposition about it. and because most people in the nightlife scene don't attend council committee meetings or whatever it may be these objections get go unopposed and then essentially a few weeks later your club gets shut down and our mecca our community space our place where we go and essentially dance and as fold mentioned our safe space is completely ruined and, and stripped away from us it's really frustrating it's really annoying it makes no sense even more so because of canning town with the areas in i used to live in canning town i'm from canning town right so much so that i felt personally offended when i wasn't invited to dj at fold right because i'm from canning town that area is a place that i've lived there for most of my life right i lived there my mom still lives there right now um, I'm very aware of the area and when Fold launched my whole enthusiasm about Fold launching was where it was it's located in the middle of an industrial park surrounded by uh, garages uh, abandoned warehouses and delivery centers right the, the DHL delivery center is literally around the corner from where Fold is that's why I used to go pick up my parcels when I wasn't at home um, so it's it's one of the rare places in London club wise that's not that's not a that has no danger of affecting people the neighbors around it through nose pollution because essentially the the um, it's, it's separated by all the residential housing through a train station right a train line the dlr and a jubilee line run right in front of fold so anyone that complaining about the noise is talking rubbish because essentially there's a train running past that your house every i don't know 10 or 12 minutes especially during the weekday right so that's happening all the time. So I thought that's the perfect place for a nightclub such as Fold because you can you can have it open early or open late. I mean, you can have it open until the early hours in the morning. Um, there's there's plenty of places that people can go to to grab some food. McDonald's around the corner. There's off license around the corner too. There's stations all dotted all around the area um, of uh, Fold. You've got the Jubilee Line just in Canning Town. You've got Star Lane, Deer Line. You've got West Ham Jubilee Line further up the road. So there's no real um encouragement once you leave the space for you to kind of hang around and just chat shit and make noise which most places have you know have um have kind of fallen by the wayside because of that and usually the security guards that fold are amazing too they usher everybody out they're usually on the streets ushering people to kind of get a move on make sure people are getting in their taxis make sure people are walking and getting out of the sp and make, just essentially clearing the roads of people and of pedestrians in general and it's usually, you know, there's not much litter around there as well after you finish too. It's just generally a place where you see people are generally trying to take care of each other and of the space to make sure this doesn't go away. Um, and I thought everyone done a good job for the most of it. I think people did a very good job. I think the security is pretty tight. They do a very thorough search in the beginning before you walk into the space. They take pictures of you. They take a copy of your ID right it's like they do everything they can do to make sure it's a safe space in stores they have lockers installed in there to allow people to make sure you know i'm sure the levels of pickpocketing in fold are probably much lower than other places in london just because of the fact that they have lockers in there that you can you know chip in with your friends and make sure your personal belongings are stored in a safe place like it's just the perfect space to go and get fucked up on a weekend and listen to some amazing techno or electronic music that's the perfect place but i just don't understand the need of people in london especially local councils to i understand you don't really agree with everyone's way of life and everyone's kind of decisions to how to spend their free time but i don't understand this real need to kind of dictate to people that want to go out at night or nightlife enthusiasts or people that have to go clubbing dictate where they can go um, um how they can go there and how long they can stay there it doesn't make any sense i don't really understand that and if anything it just encourages bad behavior because what ends up happening is that that whole spell that whole time period maybe a couple of years ago when loads of clubs in dawson and hackney were closing guess what happened the natural reaction to that was all the all the forest raves you saw happening all the stuff that was happening in abandoned spaces um early in the morning at weird hours of the day those are were those are a direct reaction to the lack of, of spaces or safe spaces or clubbing environments that we could go to and party these promoters and these kind of attendees would then go and seek these other places that in in general encourage probably worse antisocial behavior because there was no rules right there was no way of kind of policing anybody there was no structure in place just basically people in the field with some speakers getting fucked up and no one wants that really really in in a real sense no one really wants it in london you shouldn't be having a forest rave um 500 meters away from a group of fa from family on a sunday walk out Do you know i mean it's not really the right kind of vibe but the reason why that's happening is because we don't have enough safe spaces for us to go in club 
And then you thought the one place that they do spring up and fold, which is the middle of East London, the middle of nowhere, that's open late. That's again, that has a very particular crowd that goes to that kind of place anyway. It's not your general Shoreditch um, um, uh, Friday night um, kind of, you know, um, going out of a person that goes there. It's a very particular person that goes to a club that fold and you still feel the need to kind of pull the plug. It doesn't make any sense. Really doesn't make any sense. But again, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. I'm bummed out for everyone involved in fold. I think, um, Again, I think when I went there for the first fold party, I think I drunkenly said to somebody that worked there, you know, we really need to do it. We really need to make sure we look after this space because I knew straight away when I walked in that it's a special environment. And having read some information about people involved in fold, you know, it's no surprise that it was, it kind of elicited that reaction for me because all the guys involved in it are very much, you know, they're very aware of the scene. They've been to all the legendary clubs all over the world. They've DJed in places. They've been involved in different kind of, you know, labels and production arms, all that sort of stuff. So they're very much entrenched in the community. So they were able to take all the best elements of all these different, different clubbing environments and basically distill it into the fold. To say fold was basically a London copycat of Bergheim is a bit um, disrespectful. And I also think it's very um, disrespectful of Bergheim in the sense to think that you can just go to the Bergheim and just take its essence and apply it anywhere else. It's not. But it took the fundamental principles of how to kind of construct a safe space for ravers, for club kids, and somehow did it in a very London way. And that's where I think Fold really kind of was able to kind of separate itself from the pack. And again, it's just an amazing space, isn't it? Like, look at what is sprung up. Like, the pizza shop in front of... The pizza shop around the corner is basically... Uh, a byproduct of fold right somehow because everyone was still out after 6 a.m some some very smart individual decided to open up a pizza's bar spot place that was serving pizza and drinks and allow people to have a rave and a dance after six o'clock in the morning and then they've also got the unsound thing that they do or the yes yeah, the unsound the unfold the unfold thing they've got on sundays where they basically promote local artists not myself but you know some local artists get the chance to go and play there it's just essentially a place where they're taking care of their community and providing a platform but then again uh Cantown um, local council thought the need to kind of pull the plug. I'm not sure why. Again, it's very, it's probably a, you know, they kind of didn't know to spite their face really in an effect because I'm pretty sure, because I remember leaving Fold one evening and coming back on an Uber and driving down the road and seeing hordes of people out. Because you forget how, it's a 500 capacity uh, club, I'm pretty sure. But you forget how much people are actually in there. When I passed by uh, the West Ham Jubilee line, I was in the I was in my Uber and looked across the platform. It was packed full of people. Of course, all wearing black. Of course, all looking like they come from fold. I was like, Jesus Christ! Imagine the amount of money they've they've generated for the local business around the area. Whether it comes from the off license that's on Barking Road. Um, there's also a couple of breakfast spots that are opened uh, pretty early in the morning too that service a lot of the builders that work around in and around Canning Town. Um, there's also a McDonald's that's 24 hours that's around the corner too, around well around the corner from Fold about 10 minutes, 15 minutes walk from there. They probably helped a lot of people, um, you know, sustain their business or maybe or, may, or maybe even operate another business. You know, there's there's always hordes of fucking mini cabs coming to and fro Fold as well. It's just a very it's just a very distressing time for everybody involved. Um, but then, on the other end of the spectrum, I did find this other article on New Recorder that might have basically um, shed some light as to why Fold is closing, why Fold is closing, and also might be an indication as to why maybe going forward there might be a there might need to be a bit more of an understanding of how club owners and club yeah club owners and club founders can work together with local councils to make it work because we have seen it work somehow right the warehouse project in manchester of course it's a bigger it's a bigger project it's something that maybe has been subsidized has been subsidized by the council in some respects the people involved in it are you know people that were involved in the hacienda back in the day they have a very long and storied history in electronic music space and in, you know in opening night spots or nightclubs and in music production and all that stuff but they have they have found a way to make it work right so there has to be an element of some of our people who are out there putting their neck on the line and putting their money up and opening these spaces where you have to be a bit more cognitive of how you can um, collaborate and work together with these local councils in order to make sure these places survive and thrive. Because I don't think any local council member is really hell bent on making sure nightclubs close. I think they're just afraid of the consequences and they're afraid of how they're going to be able to manage it, right? And they're also afraid of, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, even though Fabric, you know, have done a lot of good for London, I'm pretty sure that the recent deaths in Fabric have affected some council members' views on nightclubs and no one wants that stain on their record. Um, so people are very um, scared and wary about these places because they don't want to turn around, give you permission, and then suddenly, you know, a couple of kids died because they took too many MDMA tablets or they took MDMA tablets cut with fentanyl, whatever it may be, right? So there has to be some 
um, give and take in that regard. Um, and I think this article from Newham Recorder probably um, sheds a bit more light as to why this situation happened and why, again, we need to be a bit more... I don't know what it is, but there's, there needs to be a bit more relationship between local councils and, um, again, the electronic music scene or the nightlife scene. Because at the moment, it just seems to be like, you know, one one side of the fence is completely opposed to it. The other side of the fence can't understand why they don't let you keep the club open until 10 a.m. That's to be a middle ground. I just don't think we can ever replicate what Berlin do because I, I just don't think sensibility wise and temperament wise in London, we have the ability to allow people to have fun and us just continue living our life. I think that's what you you see a lot in Berlin. People drinking openly in the streets is more so of a reflection of the fact that, but you know, most Berliners are, you know, in their own head and doing their own thing and not worried about what you're doing as long as you don't impede on them. But I think in London, we have this idea that somehow me enjoying myself is somehow an, I'm impeding on yours on your enjoyment of your life which again is not it can be further from the truth and there's a real lack of compromise here too there is no compromise it's, it's always one rule it's always it's always their way or the highway really that's it but anyway this article on your own recorder kind of maybe shed some light as to what actually happened and reading between the lines it might make complete sense maybe not so this is an article from New York Recorder and the headline um, is quite inflammatory. And again, if they don't have, I'm sure they wouldn't print this if they didn't have absolute concrete proof. This is actually a fact, but it says the following. Accusations of a 200,000 uh, fraud, a 200,000 pound fraud and money laundering at Canning Town Nightclub, which is kind of, you know, steep accusations. It says the following. The council has shut down Canning Town Nightclub after, palace, oh, sorry, after police arrested two men running the venue on suspicion of money laundering. So if so now we've got the reason why Fold is closed. All right. So whoever founded it, whoever put the money up, again, because this this is this is part of the issue with um the lack of um synergy or the lack of uh cooperation between people involved in the nightlife scene and local councils. To 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 generate the kind of money needed or to or to have the money needed in order to open a club, to buy the equipment, to hire the staff, you know, not a lot of people can do that. And you need some help, you need some assistance. Um, that system should come from local councils because eventually you are going to be an asset to that council. You are going to generate jobs um, indirectly through the demand of your space and the people that are coming and flooding it and other demands that spring from it, right? Imagine if a guy is selling hot dogs, you know, outside of fold, suddenly, you know, his business gets completely wiped away because the club is closed down. Do you know what I mean? It's a big arm of his investment. Cab, cab drivers, local business owners, it, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So so if we had a, if we had a way of somehow, um, if we had some kind of fund where, you know, cl you know, prospective club owners could go and maybe pitch their ideas, Dragon Den style, in order to kind of secure a bit part of funding, which also would then, would, which, would, which would come in, which would then be, um, you could work into that some kind of agreement where the club owners would have to sit down with local committee and local council, uh, people and kind of work through some of the issues maybe there'd be a mentoring program and just an idea that you know the whole premise behind what i'm saying is that there, there should be some kind of program set in place where there's a constant dialogue between the people that own the clubs and the people that live in and around it because again it's a harmonious relationship you can't just say as hipsters or as people in the scene oh just put your club wherever and don't care what anyone else thinks about it no we have to work together because these people have been there before you Yes, in one respect, but also they live there. Let's just work together and make sure it's, it's, it's beneficial. It's like when you're at home and you're doing a little mix. You know, I DJ sometimes at home, I make mixes, but I'm very aware that, you know, during the week, it's a bit of, a, it's a bit of an annoyance. So I try to end my set. So I try to kind of get my stuff done before 9 p.m. Generally, people don't sleep before 9 p.m. Generally, it's a kind of good enough time to kind of get your stuff done. And usually, if it's during the week, I have my volume at a certain level. And if it's during the weekend, I have it at a certain level. But because, again, it's this idea that I'm working to, that I'm understanding the place that I'm in. And I'm trying to be cognitive. I'm trying to be empathic. And I'm trying to be understanding of my neighbor's needs and wants, even without them asking me to do it. And no one's knocked on my door and told me to turn the music down. But I've been very uh, purposeful about when I play my music at home, what kind of volume it's at, and et cetera, and what days I do it. And I think you could kind of extrapolate that and apply that to clubs too there should be some kind of um relationship there but there isn't none so then what ends up happening is that club owners allegedly have to then go and seek um investment or startup capital from other people right um and of course it's not you know you can't blame the owner of fold or the person that went to go get the money um it's not their fault that the person who had the money has been involved in some nefarious issues right 
But that has probably come because there's no way that they can go directly to go and get some money that hasn't got, you know, extremely high interest rates or places that probably won't even give them the money in the first place. You kind of lead people, you force people down a way where they have to go and seek funds or seek operation in kind of a, in a kind of quote unquote illegal way. Similar to the um, forest raves. Forest raves only happen because venues don't want them to host their parties there or they're too expensive. So you end up, you know what, fuck this, I can just do it myself in the forest. And then, of course, for the attendees, it's awesome, but for the people that live around the area, it's horrendous, right? You've got litter and rubbish all over the place. You've got people frolicking around the fields, making noise during the day. You're around your kids and shit. It's not what you want to see. But again, it comes down to us having a relationship with local councils. We need to sit down together and work together. But the article continues. Um, the National Crime um, Agency investigators are leading the case on top of the money laundering. Their alleged fraudulent funds were used to buy £200,000 worth of higher value DJ equipment at the venue. Police convict convicted people conv uh, convicted of that level of fraud could face up to 10 years in prison, according to a statement from the Met Police officer. Officers arrested both the suspects and seized the equipment as they searched the clubs. So the people were in the club on October the 22nd. The investigation is ongoing. Fold had its license suspended on November 11th committee meeting where counselors were shown the police superintendent statement testifying it was linked to a serious crime. So I guess the council had no issue with the place beforehand. Maybe there might have been some noise complaints, but it was primarily based because of these people that have put the money up on Fold. They basically got the whole club in trouble again, which is un which is un um which is unfortunate really. Um it continues, the venue has permission to operate through the night and well into the morning on weekends as it's on an industrial site. Okay, awesome. But that police statement noted the premise itself has not frequently come to our attention as being associated with wide crime or disorder. So essentially, again, it's mostly due to the people that are again founding it, which, you know, which is again really unfortunate. Um, again, maybe it is partly because they weren't able to get funding anywhere else. But again, maybe there might need to be some due diligence in order who you get your funding from. But it's a very unfortunate circumstance. And I think they might have some room for appeal now looking at it because, you know, they can't help that the guy that was or the guy or girl that was, you know, involved in fraudulent activities didn't get their money in legit ways. They have to maybe find a way to kind of distance themselves from it, make it aware or make it abundantly clear that they didn't know that this person was, um, you know, getting their money from, you know, illegitimate sources. Um, it's, they've also taken two hundred thousand pounds worth of high value digital equipment, which is very unfortunate. I wonder how what kind of stuff that is. So, even if they do reopen, would they have any equipment to do to use? I'm pretty sure they will. Pretty sure people in the scene will cobble together and make sure they're supplied with the equipment they need. But that's super unfortunate, man. Um, <clears throat> it continues here. Uh, Fold said in November 14, state 15 statement, I wish we read already. The announcement received more than 400 comments. Another man who said he lived close by the club praised his staff and management. People who live near haven't always have been supportive. The New York recorder reported complaints from residents last year. Problems included drugs, needles left on doorsteps, and noise from revelers heading home for a night out. The club said in a statement, at the time it was a strict procedure to stop residents being disturbed, which I very much agree with and can um, definitely co-sign. It added it strive to have the highest operational standards and urge residents to get in touch with any issues. Fold is set to make its case for the councillors on Friday the 15th according to a council spokesman. Awesome. So we get to hear on the 15th what is actually is going on. I guess if you're familiar with Fold or you're familiar with New Am Council and you want to go support them, probably you should go. Probably um, more people in the scene should attend local council meetings in order to kind of make sure your voice is heard at these kind of places. But again, I think go, I'll go back on what I said previously. I think this case is probably has more um, of a reason to get appealed and probably win the appeal because again it's mostly due to the people that were funding or helped to kind of um, front the startup cost for fold have been caught you know doing some dodgy stuff which again you know you can't really speak upon that we don't really know the details of it but the club itself hasn't had any issues there's been no real cases of you know people having drug overdoses and getting fucked up every time i've been there the staff have gone over and above themselves to make sure people are safe and looked after the staff members are pretty solid the people that attend the place all, uh, every single day every single weekend for the most part police the place really well i guess that's why it reminds me a lot of greece Müller in berlin there's a very much a local community that always goes to fold that finds it a safe place to go especially the club kids who wear fucking extravagant outfits and shit there's only one place you can go and have that kind of freedom to be a Yourself, and that'll be a place like that so i think hopefully fingers crossed the appeal will get heard hopefully we'll hear some good news in the future especially for people like me who bought tickets to the innovision uh, label night that's happening in december that sold out in record time as well and again that that's the annoying part of the whole thing right it's that just when just when folders finding its groove i think if it seemed to me especially in a in the intermittent in the in the, in the middle stages when i because i would kind of 
catalog my fold journey even though i've been to loads of other nights i'd kind of catalog them in three different chapters i'd say the first chapter was when i went to the first fold party and then the second one would be when i went to see baba stilts play and then the third one would be when i went to see rishi horton play right um i think each party definitely showed the ebbs and flows of st starting a nightclub i think the first party was essentially a celebration from all their friends and family um in and around the electronic music scene coming in and celebrating this amazing um you know a monumental occasion in london club history where we have a first london 25 nightclub of course that didn't transpire as we kind of thought it would the license is something they probably apply for only certain parties throughout the year to make it financially viable but Nonetheless, we were able to party for 24 hours that first opening night. It was one of the best clubbing experiences I've ever had in my life. You can check out my previous video. I'll link it up above there for you guys to check out. But it's probably honestly one of the best nights I've ever had. And then the second party I went to was when I went to go see Baba Stilts play, right? And that was, again, a good occasion. But it was also the first time that I saw a bit of worry and a bit of kind of... Um, uh, yeah like a bit of um nervousness around the staffing around what well, the time that i went it seemed as if you know they expected it to be a bit more full than it was it was probably half three quarters of the way for the whole back area was completely empty and then by the time Eclair fifi came on and played at the end i felt really bad for her everyone had, everyone had cleared the dance floor everyone went home people were out in the smoking area no one was paying attention and she looked really down at the time but again that's just the standard procedure of being a you know up-and-coming dj trying to make your name i'm sure she wasn't tripping on it but again it goes to show that maybe they weren't as popular of a spot as you thought it would be then i buy a ticket to go see or i buy a ticket on the second hand market on the resellers market to go see richie horton play which again you're not really sure if that's a real um indication of demand because people sometimes buy up tickets and resell them and no one's there at the event or sometimes they only allocate a small amount online and then leave the rest at the door you don't really know what these things are <clears throat> if it's really true or not but then when I arrived at Fold Nightclub at 12 o'clock, at half 12 in the morning, the queue was wrapping around the side of the building and we had to wait more than an hour and a half to get inside. And by the time we got inside the nightclub, usually sometimes when they make you wait an hour and a half, you're like, oh man, there's no one in there. When I got in there, it was packed. I've never seen it that packed. There was a queue for the lockers, there was a queue for the bar, queue for the toilets, queue for the smoking area. There was actually a security guard policing people coming in and out of the smoking area. That's how ram it was. It was insane how packed it was. And I was like, okay, cool. Fold has finally found its groove folders finally popped into the mainstream and then of course on top of that when the innovation label night got, got announced of course innovation is probably a bit of a cheat code because they have a very innovation have a very rabid fan base you know i'm probably included in it too um a lot of kind of fanboys who will buy and attend anything to do with innovation um, um affiliated artists or the label itself but that event has essentially sold out as soon as the tickets were released i'm not sure if that's the first release they're gonna release more later on but that was another indication of just how popular fold is so i'm really hoping that um canning town is able to kind of see the benefit or new i is able to see the benefit that fold is bringing to local community i still think there's probably more people in the area that are happy that fold is there i'm sure most people around the surrounding areas too are happy fold is there especially when the, with the with the transport connections and i think they can find a way to kind of make sure that there is harmony between the both camps maybe it's just an issue with the fraudulent activities of the guy involved in the funding and everything else is fine but regardless hopefully this kind of encourages them to be a bit more dialogue going forward and i'm really hoping fingers crossed today we have some good news um this weekend about fold reopening and for those of you that are attending parties happening uh, this weekend too um and if you're in the area i'll definitely encourage you to go to the council meeting on the november 15th to lend your support to the whole fold team so yeah um big up fold and hopefully those guys live long